Ederson Oliveira here for DNNHero.com and I have with me Scott Wilkson. Scott, how are you, man? Partner in crime. Partner in crime. And I <laughs> want good. to start I want to start this um, this monthly chat with uh, the acknowledgement of our new MVP. Not <laughs> NBC. MVP. Yeah. Uh, Scott, congratulations for your nomination of uh, not yeah nomination of as, as a new MVP what does what does an MVP person do and at the end an MVP does you know what, what is it tell, tell us a, a little bit about that uh, well I'm still learning but uh, we get uh, we have a there's a private forum and there's there's actually talk about making that read only to to the public but but we have uh, you know a private forum where we can talk and discuss issues there's a monthly conference call that is, um, I think it's on the first Thursday of the month. And actually, I just uh, attended the first one. It was it was just this past Thursday. And uh, yeah, basically a conference call where all the MVPs get on. And and, and Joe, Joe Brinkman uh, is on, Cathal Connolly, and Ash Prasad and some others from, um, from, from DNN, um, Charles Nurse as well. And yeah, we just chat about things. Joe has a, has a, a schedule on there, and and we go through and, um, and and talk about the releases and things like that, and uh, and where we can pitch in. I think that's the big challenge that Joe is making to the MVPs, and then and then it's going to spread out to the rest of the community um, uh, about the con you know contribution, just like uh, what was talked about in the in the conference. But uh, and then yeah, we I get a, I guess they'll send me a plaque and a and a backpack and. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I have to I have to make sure I, I'll update your snapshot on the website to say MVP, you know. But right. Again, yeah. Uh, you can take the little banner that you have on on the M, on the DNN forums. I now have the the big MVP badge on my profile. So I'm gonna yeah. get that. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, okay. and I can blog now. But I think that's open to anybody who you know, just like you you can you know blog on the DNN software site. Very so, good. Yeah. Very good. I mean, really, congratulations. It was just, uh, and again, just, I guess, uh, uh, let me uh, step back here. This um, chat today is really about a recap of the DNN conference that uh, took right. place about uh, just just over a week ago uh -huh. on uh, you know, Palm Beach. So we're going to be, again, talking a lot about what happened during that event. And, uh, you know, it's hopefully it's a, it's a good it's a good summary of, of what went on there. Um, mm -hmm. First, I want to start by thanking uh, a bunch of people that uh, did a great work during the, the, the during the event. I mean, first of all, Arrow team, Arrow has been the, the 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 guys behind the entire event, so they did an awesome job. Um, put things together. Uh, also, I want to thank Manage.com for the nice the nice Don't limo. Know. Did you, yeah. did you ride? I mean, you, you we, came a little bit late. Didn't you? We did, but the, we I think we were their last run, oh. and so yeah, we got to we got to to get in, and it was great. First, yeah, I mean, the great treat. I mean, it's good to be there and have people waiting for you. I mean, and again, mm -hmm. I have to thank uh, a bunch of people there: Tony, Jeff, Ken, John, Johnny. Again, there's uh -huh. so many people on Manage.com and Manage that uh, I cannot really the entire list here but again great treat i hope that you guys keep doing that year after year i'm looking forward to yeah. you know to 2015 already i also want to thank joe craig and paul scarlett those are my partners in crime during din and com we the, the three of us we did a session called got a question got get an answer and it was quite interesting i mean uh even though Mitchell Sellers hijacked it a little bit, but that's fine, Mitch. <laughs> I forgive you, and you were an awesome contribution. I mean, if you're not there, I don't know what you would be doing. But again, great, great call. So again, thanks, Joe, Paul, and look forward to keep that session open for mm -hmm. next year as well. We are actually planning of doing uh, a small booth of question and answer that people can just stop by anytime. During mm -hmm. the event, and oh yeah, that'd be there. cool. Because yeah. because again, just 15, 15 minutes, we realize that people have a lot more questions than can be really handled during fifty minutes. I mean, it was interesting. We have about ten people, but uh, but two of those they monopolize the whole conversation. <laughs> well, so, and it's also uh, 
you know, it's hard to choose what, you know, you, there might be three sessions out of, you know, every time slot had like five sessions to choose from. So that's Virtual. hard to do too. Virtual, very hard to decide which one. I mean, if you were gonna go to one, you'll be missing something out. I mean, you'll right. be left, you'll be leaving something on the table. I, how think, was your, the, how yeah, was I think the table's a great idea. Yeah, so we will pitch that to the organizers next year, but that's something that uh, we quickly realized that it might be a good idea, you know, not for a brand, but but for, you know, just to be there open for, right. you know, beginners to come in and discuss. How was your session? My session was good. I was, uh, that that was the, the funny thing is when Joe, uh, last year, I, I did get a heads up from Joe. I mean, literally on the flight, uh, I got an, yeah, right after I got out of the, off the flight, I got the email from Joe saying that, uh, you know, uh, about the MVP thing, and I didn't even believe it. So I was just like, well, I'll see, I'll, I'll wait and see. I won't really say much, and I'll wait and see. And if you remember last year, they announced the MVPs at the wrap up session at the end. Not, and so, um, when I th that when I went to the the I definitely wanted to go to the keynote, but I had to leave about 10, 15 minutes early to get ready because I was in slot number one for my session, and I had no idea if anything was you know I had to the projector or anything was going to work. So I was in there working, and that's when they announced it. So. <laughs> and you missed the picture. I missed it. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. But but yeah, no, my session went well and um, people liked it. It was it's kind of interesting. It's kind of built on um, some some previous DNN hero type sessions. So uh, I kind of encouraged everyone to uh, you know to, to, to so all the DNN hero subscribers will see a nice progression, right? But the, some of the people that weren't uh, yet subscribers, which will probably will be very soon, um, you know, were you know. It, didn't get that opportunity to see it, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but it but it went well. And and my my other coworker from uh, from Bravo Blue Bolt, uh, James McKee, he did his on deployment and showed off uh, our our beta version of the uh, the content bridge tool, the the one click deployment. Got so uh, yeah, things are going good. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so what I what I would like to cover here, and I think that was one of the highlights of the event was really the keynote from from joe talking yeah. about talking about what's next for dnn in terms of technology you know so um again there are a lot of points here i'm going to start with the schedule uh in, 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 i mean the the roadmap so i'm just yeah. going to open the roadmap uh let me see if i can find that yeah so i have here the roadmap that they post on their own website and so uh, again just recently we had a 734 I i'm not gonna talk too much about that there there are just a, a, a bunch of small little bug fixes mm -hmm. but the the key thing here from the from joe's keynote is the fact that uh, 7.4 is coming up which will have ck editor the new ck editor they are again replacing telerik editor the telerik control oh, telerik yeah yeah and in the end, from a from the editor point of view, they'll be using the CK editor. And and if I'm not, if I I think that I got this right, but they are bringing the workflow the workflow structure from their commercial commercial version to the platform. I mean, I don't know if you, if you got that. Uh, oh, I didn't Scott. see that. Yeah, okay. but but even if you even if you go to the community uh, roadmap. You're gonna see that the workflow is one of the key highlights for 7.4. So it oh, okay. sounds like they are bringing the workflow back, uh, not back, but uh, from the commercial version to the community version. So that's that's the feeling that I have here. And so I th I think maybe the reason for that is also because they they've been talking about allowing other modules to be able to plug into the same workflow as an API. Got it. And um, I, I guess in the commercial version, I mean, it's it's really just kind of the text HTML module that I think that really it's sort of attached to it. And I think they're going to bring it in as a as a a first level like API member in the in the core is what my understanding is got it got it okay so 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 that's that is 7.4 which should come up sometime in january and yeah. then next we have 7.5 which again it's it's quarter it's it's a it's about beginning of, of a second quarter 
2015, which will include MVC modules and a lot more stuff like HTML single page application. It will be it will be required to run on .NET uh, 452. And they also mention about a platform UI separation. Do you do you have any? I mean, do you know exactly what that means, uh, Scott? I mean, platform UI separation. Um, I guess that's maybe detailing out the MVC stuff because I know I know the the big refactoring would would, would was talked about as the being the version eight. So I'm not quite sure. I think maybe that's just talking about the MVC. Yeah, but, but let me tell you, I made some notes here about when he was talking about 7.5. And mm -hmm. he, as far as I understood, is that on 7.5 already, a lot of features will be removed. A lot of old features that, oh. uh, that are not really required to be there, like newsletters and, and some yeah. other stuff. They yeah. will also be removing deprecated deprecated APIs. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of old stuff will be going away on that version already, on 7.5 already. I'm not even talking about the big one that will come yeah. after that. So again, okay. get ready to, to have a lot of the existing APIs, which are already flagged as deprecated, get mm -hmm. ready to have them removed from the platform. What they are really going to do here is they will they will make it very slim. They will slim down. They will trim down the mm -hmm. core platform. And again, that's the other point that uh, he made there. That it seems that on 7.5 already, there will be something that we will call the core platform. Yeah. And then they will have distributions, like the yeah. CMS distribution. like, yeah. And then he just made it open, like the DNN X distribution. Uh, like yeah. It could be the DNN blog distribution, the DNN that the DNN commerce distribution. So again, that that seems to be their 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 way moving forward. Again, a lot of stuff is not fully clear to me, but you can get ready for a trim down, slim version of DNN that is coming up from seven five already. That's Q two okay. of two thousand fifteen. Now, mm -hmm. after that, around Q three Q four end of Q Q3, beginning of Q4, mm -hmm. we're going to have what it's called, uh, maybe DNN 8, maybe DNN Next, not sure yeah. how they will name that, but basically that will be the full MVC version of DNN, which, mm -hmm. and Joe, he kind of primed the audience about that already. He said that uh, DNN has been very disciplined on creating an upgrade path that you can move from one version to the other one. And that was only broken way back then around DNN 2, DNN, DNN 3. I think between 2 and 3, I think. Yeah, so yeah. they have a rupture there. Now, he was just priming us because now there will be another rupture. Yeah. So from DNN 7X to DNN 8 or DNN Next, there, mm. will not, there doesn't seem to be a natural upgrade path. It mm -hmm. will be it will look more like export from one, import to the other one. So yeah. again, get ready for that. There might be some, some, um, you know, some work to be done there in terms of moving aside from DNN 7, let's call it to DNN 8. So there might be some work there, but it's, it's, quite, it's quite an interesting time to be involved with the platform now that they, and, and let's, let's be frank, I mean, they are, a little bit late to that uh, MVC game, but at, at least they yeah. are there now and, and they they seem to be fully committed to that. Now, I have a point for you, uh, Scott. Maybe you have covered a little bit of that on previous videos of yours, or maybe you're going to be doing that in the future, but the if I if I was developing commercial modules or if, I were, if I'm developing modules in general, maybe customized for certain clients, you know, not commercial modules, but again, just custom build modules, uh -huh. What do you advise people to be doing now to make sure that they, well, they either have a, a, an easier transition to MVC or that they start already now with something that can be used out of the box on DNN, let's call it DNN 8 or DNN MVC? What, what, you, what you, you know, would you say about that? 
Yeah, I I know. I mean, it is possible to run some MVC modules. There's there's um, some very limited examples out there that you can get your hands on. I know um, you know hotcakes is MVC, um, but I would say first of all, become a, a DNN Hero subscriber because I will be d definitely doing a MVC module development video uh, right off the heels of my first time I can get a hold of of, of a beta copy of 7.5 so that's number one uh, but in just in the meantime I would say you know the the last tutorial I did on MVP which is model view presenter it's it is a little bit different it's a web forms implementation of that pattern in order to uh, at least separate out your business logic from your front end from your AS, ASCX your web control um, just understanding patterns, I think, is is a big thing, and that's what I attempted to show in in that set of tutorials. That was just I, that was last month. So the unit testing and all that stuff is is a is a big part of that. I think that would ease the transition because you're already understanding uh, those separation of concern patterns for back end development. And then the other thing is, um, you know, the client centric approach that I've been using you know obviously in the client centric video where I did the knockout uh, web API video and then I've extended that to uh, I think uh, the other video I did uh, similar was my search I believe and uh, or maybe not the search but but definitely the one I have coming out based on my DNN con presentation extends that client centric and adds a searching component onto it so when you develop in a client centric approach in other words you're you're not really leveraging any of the server side technology of the web forms you're really just using uh, JavaScript whether it be angular or knockout going directly to web API services that won't change really in the MVC model you'll still write I, and I believe the even the um, the DNN API wrapper around web API will not significantly change much unless they do some changes to the security layer but that's going to stay the same so if you've written a module that's that's doing that you're you're, you're going to be have a much easier time porting that to an MVC approach because like I said there's hardly any server-side uh, code you're using other than the web API services that won't change got it great points great points there and so so again stay tuned for I, I see really a big opportunity for Scott to 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 ease and uh, you know create a lot of interesting tutorials about easing the transition from web forms development to to MVC. So again, stay tuned mm -hmm. for for that in the coming uh, months. Yeah. Um, out of the income, I saw a, a very good blog post from Beth Fireball. Mm -hmm. um, the link is right. I'm gonna post the link, of course, and. I'm going to open that page. Uh, basically, if anyone wants to see a recap of any of the sessions, what she is doing here is that she listed all the different sessions and each, each presenter will come up with a blog post about their session with resources on their sessions, you know, links, files. So from this blog post, you're going to have access to the entire list of presentations from the conference. So again, great initiative. Uh, right now, there's just one link so far. But again, over the, the coming days, weeks, you're going to see that being filled out. And mine will up, be up there soon. And, and I, I plan on doing a, a recap tutorial video on my session so that everyone has the benefit of, of seeing it. Um, and then we'll uh, maybe cross post that on Well, we would cross post it on DN and Hero as well. And uh, I'll tweet about that. I'll tweet it out to everybody. So follow me, follow at DNN Hero. Uh, we'll cross post that whenever mine's available. Perfect, perfect. So, so yeah, so great post there. Um, now I want to just quickly mention, I can I, I will consider that as my pick of the month in terms of uh, module slash skin. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I want to focus a little bit of, uh, on, that, on that particular module that not only they had a, a presentation during the NNCOM, but again, they're really trying to push hard on this module. And I, I had a look, the, the module is called Sharp Look, and it's from Dean and Sharp. And that's my, my friend, uh, Bogdan Litescu. Mm -hmm. uh, just want to open here their page on, sorry, on the store. Yeah, so, so what they are preaching here with this module is that 
it's an alternative to it's not only an alternative to 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 the the regular DNA administration because they build you know thumb size type of stuff that can that you can manage your DNA from from a from a from a, a mobile device from a tablet from a, even from from a small a small phone too so that's one of the angles that they are going towards and the other one is that they are going towards the angle of with this module or it's a module slash skin uh, you don't need to have you know other skins you can just start from scratch and you can create as many panes as you want dynamically you can and it's all bootstrap based it's a, it's a very interesting initiative the, on, the only the only thing that I would say is that I've tried them on my own uh, test website the first time that I installed I got to a blank page and it's hard to start a new page from a blank canvas at least in my opinion also again when I see a blank page I get intimidated but one thing yeah. that this module brings to the table as well because of its flexibility it brings a few templates too so i i would really strongly encourage you know dna sharp and bogdan to really bring a good set of templates because mm. of, of content templates because without a good set i'm sure that people get intimidated by looking at a blank canvas to get things started but but again if they are able and they bring already a few a few templates like this one that i'm just showing this is a template that came out of the box with them you know so again you have those huge icons you see you have this sliding panel and again as you can see by the size of those icons you can see that this this will fit well uh this will be a good fit for your th thumbs you know for for your fingers there you can you can really play with your fingers on a mobile device but again i really think that uh a, 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 an improved set of templates that you don't start from scratch you start from a, an existing uh you know content set it would increase a lot of their chances to really make a huge impact with, with a module like that again looking forward to see how how this will unfold the next chapter is very excited and i'm i'm excited too because it's a uh, in a way it's a uh, it's a direction that uh, even DNN is going towards, which is a simpler UI, a more streamlined UI, and that's what you guys will be seeing a lot, and we will be seeing a lot on what they are coming up with uh, DNN X, DNN 8, and even DNN 7.5. Should we should uh, see some stuff like that already? Any, mm -hmm. Anything from your side on that, Scott? I mean, any, any notes and comments? Oh. Perfect. Okay, so um, so that was my pick of the month, DNN, DNN Sharp Look. Sorry, Sharp Look from mm -hmm. uh, DNN Sharp. And um, yeah, next, I have an interview next week with Mandip Sith. Sing? Sith? Mandip? <laughs> Mandip? Uh, you have to forgive me. I'm going to get that right next time. Uh, so I'm going to be interviewing him for the series of vendor interview that I'm doing for the DNN store. And on December 5th, I think it's a Friday, uh, I will be joining Joe Brickman and Will Stroll on a DNN Hangout. Um, again, that will be an interesting one. I'll be talking about page templates and how, how you can use that to better, to make it easy uh, for your content editors to create new pages and, and keep consistent throughout the entire website. Um, yeah, so that was the one. Now, let me just go back here. I had one point in my agenda that I was supposed to mention. I just want to quickly mention that uh, Sean Walker is now part of Arrow Consulting. Um, again, you know Sean Walker. If you don't, I mean, I don't know what you were doing last 10 years, but <laughs> Sean Walker is the... Is the uh, you know initial guy that uh, brought dnn to life and uh he's no longer with dnn corp but now he's with arrow arrow consulting and i'm just going to open this page here just want to quickly mention here arrow designs they have this incubator thing uh which you know they they cultivate new ideas and new 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 um uh, maybe new 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 companies or new initiatives 
and Sean is heading that innovation group. So again, it's interesting to see him moving to uh, new things. And uh, again, that's, that really surprised me to know that Hotcakes e-commerce is part of Aerocell. It's part of this, this initiative. So again, it's interesting mm -hmm. to know that. And I thought that someone out there may not know that. And it's interesting to get to know those kinds of uh, insights of, uh, of the community in general. No. By the way, uh, Scott, what is Bravo? Bravo? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, talk, Bravo talk is a, yeah, yeah Bravo is a new brand we created at Blue Bolt. And um, it's a sister, a sister company to Pack Flash. And it, but it's going to be um, where uh, the branding under which all of our what we consider enterprise uh, DNN products. And uh, but yeah, so we have right now we have a search product that I'm developing and um, a, a content bridge. I think we're calling it that that James McKee on our team is developing or, or heading up. And basically just, you know, our goal is to put these type of enterprise products on top of DNN to make DNN, uh, in, in, in the vendor acceptance speech, I said to make DNN bigger. You know, that's our goal, to make DNN bigger and make it more like uh, have the type of features that these really high dollar enterprise CMSs have, uh, but for a lot less money. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So, so again, it's... Uh... I think it's interesting to to get to know what's going on in the ecosystem with their with the players as well. So, uh, is that yeah. um, anything from your side? I mean, you you quickly mentioned about something on during your first MVP meeting. So, do you want to prime us a little bit? I mean, is there anything that is not a secret that can be you know, revealed to the audience? Yeah, I think um, J Joe made a uh, uh, Joe Brinkman made a a um, challenge for us as MVPs, and I, th I don't think he'll mind me t talking about this openly, that, you know, to uh, for us to all get involved in the process of contributing, right, to do what, pull requests from the, from the in, in GitHub. And um, his challenge was to go out and find a, a couple JIRAs. There's, you know, se several of them out there, and to try to fix a couple of them and do a pull request before our next meeting. And so we're starting with our group of what, 25, I think right now the MVPs are 25 MVP, MVPs. Um, and many of those who, who have been contributing over the past couple months, like Brian Dukes and, and Peter Donkers and, and several others. But uh, so challenging us to all the MVPs to try to get a pull request in so that we can all start contributing. And just, just, just bugs, right? Just fix a couple bugs. It's easier than it sounds because <laughs> I've already been looking through the jeers and going, Oh, I don't know. Some of these are like, like huge architecture changes. I don't want to get into that. <clears throat> but um, I also attended Brian Duke's session on GitHub, uh, GitHub, and and contributing to the community. And uh, it's not easy. I have to tell you. Have you looked at what it? I mean, you got to you got you know, join GitHub for one, and create your own fork and clone, and you know, push pull or or bring it down and, and commit to your own thing and pull it and push it and pull it. <laughs> you know, GitHub, every time I use Git, it, 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 I always have to go back through my manual, you know, whenever I uh, push out a new release of my module to, to Coplex, because that's now on Git too. So anyway, um, I might actually do a tutorial on that once I get a good handle on it as well, but I, I will be trying to do that challenge. I will at least try to uh, push out a, a fix to the core code by the next month and and go and and detail out I'll I'll take my own notes to detail out exactly what the process is in order to do it and the one big thing they say is don't put some huge a lot of people feel intimidated by that like contributing to this giant project right the trick is and is what I've heard from many people uh, Ernst Peter very, different people that are contributing is Try to keep the change small. Just just fix some little thing and do the pull request. It'll be much more likely that you will get uh, that will get into the next release. You know, I think I think you bring a, a great point there, Scott, which is uh, document your process there and yeah. do a tutorial on that because yeah. I have to I have to tell you, and I told Brian that Brian Duke about that mm -hmm. that it's very intimidating. The whole process is very intimidating. So yeah. so. Uh, uh, yeah. So again, if there is if there is a streamlined, uh, you know, even though he said, okay, just do this, this, and that, but but still, I mean, it's good to see you yeah. doing that 
and yeah. so so we can follow the same thing you know it and again yeah. as, as you said i still feel intimidated by by that whole process and, hey uh, i do too and, and you know what a lot of other people do even mvps <laughs> you see yeah okay perfect so i think that we come to an end after about 30 minutes and uh scott anything else um, some future tutorials, obviously look forward to the DNN session so that you can get the advantage of knowing that. Um, and um, I, I'm working on an Angular module, so that'll be good. Another client-centric version, basically the same thing I did in Knockout. I'm going to try, I'm going to do an Angular. Um, it's going to take me a while because I want to give you guys the best practice at it. And so I'm very, relatively new. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. And then, like I said, as soon as I can get my whole hands on a, uh, a beta version of the MVC implementation that's going to be headed your way. You know, we'll, we'll be on the forefront of that, of that revolution. Perfect. Very good. Very good. So just to keep you guys updated on what's going on on DNN Hero, uh, right now I'm, I'm what well, you haven't seen much of my personal content there lately because my focus on then and here has been to reorganize the content. So, so right now I'm very close to, to have, all the existing content reorganizing in, in a much in a much easier way that you can find a search so I'm, I'm coming to a conclusion of that in the next week or so you're going to be able to see clearly aside from having a search at the top which is very prominent right now you're going to be able to see uh, really nicely structured content there on the website so i'm really focusing my time to get this done right and then i'll move on to 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 continue to produce uh, my my personal contribution, my personal content there on dnnhere.com. But that's about it. That's it for now. Thank you very much, guys. See you next time. See you, Scott. All right. See you later.